Hi everyone! Today I'll be walking you through how I save 67% of my take home pay. This video is by no means a way to brag about how much I'm saving. It's merely meant to give you some inspiration on how you can cut down on spending in certain categories of your life. And I know that I love watching these videos, so I figured I would make one of my own. The first way that I save money is by cutting down on recurring expenses. These are expenses that you're locked into paying every single month or every couple of months. Expenses that you have to pay every single month are really going to eat their way into your savings rate. And by cutting down on just a few of these expenses, you're really going to start to see that growth in your savings for the long term. So for me personally, I really took a hard look at those rates that I'm paying every single month and tried to cut out certain areas that weren't important to me. For example, I don't have a gym membership. Now, I'm pretty lucky in that my work actually has a gym on campus that I can use for free and workout classes on top of that. And my apartment complex also has a small gym attached to it as well. On top of that, I actually really just like doing workout classes at home, like yoga and strength training. The YouTube channel Yoga with Adrian has single-handedly eliminated my back and neck pain that I was getting from working an office job. I'll link her down below along with several of my other favorite workout YouTube channels. I'm of the mindset that your health is one of the best things that you actually can invest in because in a way you're buying back your time and energy. That being said, there are a lot of really inexpensive gym memberships like Planet Fitness and Fitness 19 and I think those are great options. But if you are going to pay top dollar for your gym membership, just make sure that you're actually using it. I also don't pay for subscription services like Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, or Hulu. I am very lucky because my family members have some of these accounts and they'll let me use them from time to time if I want to watch a movie on Netflix or if I want two day shipping with Amazon Prime. If you do have these subscription services, take a hard look at them and make sure that you're actually using them. And if you still want to keep them, maybe you can look into talking to family members and consolidating into one subscription with them so that you have a lower rate per month. Another service that I don't pay for is cable. Cable can be a huge bill that eats into your budget. If you do currently pay for cable, I'd recommend taking a hard look at the shows you actually watch on cable versus something that could be offered through a streaming service. If you do think a cable service is still worth it, shop around with different providers and see if you can get a lower rate. Another way that I save money is I actually don't get a haircut at a salon. As crazy as it sounds, I've actually never even stepped foot into a salon for a haircut. I usually have a family member cut my hair or pretty much anyone else that I can convince to do it. I will say that part of this is because I have a really manageable hairstyle. I have pin straight hair and I keep it in a long style so all that's really necessary is just someone to trim off the ends. And yes, I agree that it probably would look at least a little bit better if I got it cut at the salon, but to me that extra expense just isn't worth it. I know that some of us are still in quarantine, so maybe you've been experimenting with some at-home haircuts. Maybe this is a good time to evaluate with if you think you can continue doing haircuts at home, or maybe you can ask someone to at least trim your ends to extend the period of time in between your salon visits. I also know that there are a lot of really cheap technical schools that give haircuts for really low prices, so maybe that's something you can investigate as well. Another thing I don't spend money on is I don't get my nails done. I love the look of freshly manicured nails, but to me they just chip right away and they're really expensive, so to me it's just not worth it. I know that food can be a huge expense in people's budget. For groceries, I like to combat this by shopping at budget grocery stores like Aldi and Costco. I also only eat out maybe once every two to three weeks. And even then I'm usually just getting a pizza or maybe chipotle. I usually have no problem at all spending money on travel because to me the experience and the adventure are worth the expense. I also live in North Carolina and my family lives in Pennsylvania. So for a while I was spending money on a plane ticket every couple of months to go visit them. And I had no problem with that. But by discovering credit card churning and travel rewards, 
My travel expenses have been reduced significantly, if not eliminated completely. If you don't know what credit card churning is, this essentially means just opening up credit cards and getting the sign up bonus for them, which usually comes in the form of travel rewards points or cash back. Even though we're in quarantine now and travel has been significantly limited, I'm still building up those credit card points. So when we're out of this, I'll have a whole backlog of points that I can use for airfare. I really wanna make a whole video on travel rewards and how I got into it in the first place. So let me know if that's something that you guys would be interested in. Another thing I would recommend you do to really increase your savings rate is to pay yourself first when you get paid every single month. Whenever I get paid at the start of the month, I have automatic investments into my 401k, my Roth IRA, and my brokerage account. Since this money is going straight into your savings and investing accounts, instead of going into your checking account, you're not even tempted by the idea of spending this money. Another easy way that I have saved money in the long term is by having no debt. I graduated college with a bachelor's degree and a master's degree, and luckily my master's program was paid for by a fellowship that I was part of. But with my bachelor's degree, I had about $38,000 of student loan debt whenever I graduated. When I got my first job out of school, I threw every cent that I had at my debt, and I was able to pay it off in under a year since I graduated. Because I don't have to pay back my debt every single month, since it's already paid off, I can now put my money towards investing and saving. Another approach that I've adopted that has really helped me save money in the long term is by adopting a minimalist mindset. I by no means claim to be a minimalist, but I do like to think of myself as an aspiring minimalist. Minimalism is essentially cutting out the things in life that don't matter to you to make room for things that do matter. By regularly going through a routine of decluttering my space, it really makes me more mindful whenever I go out and buy something because I'm thinking, okay, do I really need this item or is it just going to be something that's going to be decluttered in the future? Shopping in itself is really an addictive thing. When you buy something, your brain literally sends a rush of dopamine into your system. And once that boost wears off, you're always seeking the next fix. So next time you're buying something, make sure you're taking the time to stop and think about whether or not you need this thing, whether you love this thing, and it's going to bring you joy for a long period of time, or if you're just looking to seek that fix. You really just need to start thinking of your money as your time. These are two extremely valuable resources in your life your money and your time. So when you buy something, you need to make sure that it's worth that trade-off of your time. For example, if you're buying a $50 sweater and you make $25 an hour, is that sweater really worth two hours of your time? If it is, then by all means, buy the sweater. Another thing I wanna say is that don't feel shame if you buy any of the things that I've listed here. The only person that you really need to justify your expenses to is yourself. And if something on this list truly brings you joy, then by all means, spend your money on it. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know what are some of your favorite money saving tactics in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. And be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. That being said, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you next time. Bye.